Welcome everyone, we're here at Black Hat 2017. I'm sitting down again with none other than Phil Lieberman of Lieberman Software. Phil, welcome to the show. Thanks. Um, so we're going to do these questions on the future of security. I'm so excited, it's the first time I've run through these set of questions. It's going to be awesome. All right. What are some of the major changes you hope to see in security over the next five years? So like the real, real answer or the, the right answer? Um, like like a funny answer is okay. And so then, like like my all my competitors going away is that a good answer? That's a, that's an answer. Yes. So why don't we do the other answer? <laughs> okay. So what what do you think is going to happen in the future of security? So we're already starting to see some of the things changing. For example, you know more and more people are going to consumptive devices. More and more people are moving to the cloud, mm -hmm. and the cloud providers are taking over that activity. We're also seeing a large growth in what are called managed security providers, mm. and also also starting to see a lot of the mainline providers of services moving into just, you know, install your PC, install your software, beginning to offer security as a service. And so uh, even some of the mainline vendors who would, like telcos who have offered that and even some of the hardware manufacturers mm -hmm. are beginning to move into that area. There's even some consolidation of companies where they're bringing them all together under like one umbrella. Mm. Like, you know, for example, Dimension Data, you mm -hmm. know, where NTT purchased different pieces of them and they're reassembling them into a conglomerate that, mm -hmm. you know, is going to offer you everything from your equipment mm -hmm. all the way through the security services. It's interesting. I've seen that trend already. A lot of... Uh, 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 interactions between it, or acqu not acquisitions, but adoptions of security technology by an MSSP sure. to really allows them to serve many different industries and many different MSSPs targeting different industries. I think you're right. I think that's really a trend that's going to continue uh, as we move forward. So, but, you know, it makes a lot of sense. Think about how hard it is to find security professionals. Yeah. And, and, and the thing is that you want to keep them focused. Mm -hmm. And there's more than enough work uh, for one company if you're dealing with multiple companies that you're managing. So mm -hmm. if you own a whole bunch of people, you know, the, the biggest problem in service delivery is keeping your people busy. Right. And right. so if you're offering this as a service, you can run them through different clients. So everybody's busy every hour of the day. The economics work, but if you try to hire mm -hmm. somebody have them work for you know a, a corporation, keeping them up to date, doing all those other things. I think consolidation of that makes sense, but even Microsoft's getting into that business. Oh yeah, absolutely. What are some of the major challenges we'll face in security in the near future? That maybe we haven't identified even at this conference yet. Right? Yeah, I mean, you know what's happening today is something both healthy and disturbing at the same time. People are coming to finally realize that the devices and the infrastructure mm -hmm. that they thought was secure is not anywhere near as secure as they thought it was. Some of the things that have been most very disturbing was the NSA losing control of their tools mm -hmm. or some of their toolkits. Um, very disturbing about that because they had a they had a, a purpose. Whether you want to debate whether the purpose was good or not good, mm -hmm. but uh, some of the stuff was really toxic. I think that's some of the things that we're not going to really know what the effect is. But people are starting to get a front end view of it. Mm. That you know a lot of the stuff that they have uh, is going to get upgraded awfully soon. It was validation for a lot of my friends that are ultra paranoid about their security. And I think this was the, well, the, here's why I'm ultra paranoid, because of those leaks and uh, methods that were used by the NSA coming into the public life. Well, you know, so. we've been alluding to it for years, mm. telling people that you need to have another backstop, that people will get in. They're going, no, no, there's no problem. We have firewalls, we have antivirus. Right. And I, all I could tell them was, you really need to do a bit more mm -hmm. uh, because they will get in, they will be able to move around in your environment, and once they're there, what do you want to let them see? Mm -hmm. And uh, they unfortunately really didn't believe me. Um, and even the NSA, by the way, has a great video, by the way, on uh, tailored operations explaining what they do mm. and telling you that uh, these are the things that you should do as a bare minimum. Uh, to just close the door and lock it, right, <laughs> uh, right. without any kind of like super duper uh, mm -hmm. hack, of, you know, uh, super duper zero day hacks. Um, how will the threats evolve in computer security in the next several years? <sighs> you know, it's already a target rich environment with unlimited potential for criminals and nation states mm -hmm. with a, a inconceivably large number of systems um, and an immature set of mm -hmm. laws and um, rules 
There are rules, by the way, in the internet. Uh, some of the legislators are trying to come up with a so-called Geneva Convention or some yep. other way of trying to evolve uh, legal frameworks. I think I was hoping that maybe that might get better, uh, legal frameworks and an understanding of what's acceptable and unacceptable. You know, one of the greatest quotes I heard was from uh, Kevin Mandia saying that there's only two ways to solve cyber warfare, the Seventh Fleet or a bag of money. <laughs> and it's better if there were legal frameworks and better mm -hmm. treaties worked out between different countries. But since this is about involuntary transfer of wealth between different countries, mm -hmm. you know, the idea of what are you going to give them in exchange is one of the biggest issues. So. The biggest threat that I see these days is the fact that we have all this old equipment, all this IoT stuff that's being put in that nobody's ever going to update or even change the passwords on. Mm -hmm. And I also see the fact that the legal frameworks don't exist um, and nobody has really stepped up to deal with it. What they've come up with is unworkable. It's yeah. draconian. And it doesn't really deal with needs, what needs to be dealt with. And this isn't a Republican or Democrat issue. It's not GDPR doesn't solve it. No. Uh, so this is really about economics and about le senior leadership getting together to try to solve this. Yeah, I, I either think the, the methods that are, or things that are put in place are too weak or their recommendation is way too draconian, as you said, and they're just going to put too many controls on people. There needs to be a, a middle ground. I don't see anyone playing in that that middle ground. Yeah, I mean, even when we, you know, I've listened to Brad Smith or, or um, you know, the guy at Apple, Tim, mm -hmm. talk about his ideas of privacy and security. They do need to make a decision. They have to draw the bright line. Right. Um, wherever they draw it is going to be fine. Um, look, the ACLU wants it. Um, mm -hmm. Corporations want it, the government wants it. They have to make a decision. They have to decide where it's going to be. They can move the line, mm -hmm. but they have to set a line. Right. And what there is today, you know, the idea of building bigger walls just doesn't work. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, Phil, uh, you're here at Black Hat. Are there some uh, product announcements or things you want to announce for our listeners and viewers? So, one of the things we did is we now announced our Red Suite. We started shipping that. Red mm -hmm. Suite, Rapid Enterprise Defense Suite. So, what this does is three things. One is, um, you know, when you think about how most hacks occur, it's usually mm -hmm. because of something really stupid that happened. Somebody created an account password, and didn't get rid yeah. of it, or mm -hmm. they've set a blank password, uh, or they've given too many people rights to things saying, mm -hmm. I'm going to get rid of that. So what we did is we created a set of tools that IT administrators can use to go do reporting or health checks on all of their environment on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. See what's set wrong. It's the These particular tools are primarily toward the Windows environment, mm -hmm. but we have some others that are cross-platform. Mm -hmm. But what these tools do is show you what's set wrong, what IT did as a mistake, and then what you see is wrong, you sort it, find the things that are wrong, right click, and get rid of those mistakes. So can it um, uh, find default or like yeah. blank passwords yeah. in the environment yeah. accounts. Yeah. I've Easy. always thought that was a huge exposure that was largely unaddressed oh, in yeah. the vendor space. So, oh, But here's some other crazy stuff too. I mean, somebody who might be a regular user, they added them to the administrators group of all the machines. Right. Because they needed to get something working. Mm -hmm. and they got it working, but they never took that away. Right. Uh, or they gave them rights like act as part of the operating system. Mm -hmm. Now they did that to try to get the code working, and but they never backed it off. Mm -hmm. And so they just leave this kind of crazy stuff in the environment. So these are tools to find and deal with those things. We've also upgraded our uh, privilege identity, privilege access management mm -hmm. system. We announced some new technology we just applied for some patents on that deal with online and offline systems. Mm -hmm. So this is a really interesting idea to get us because, you know, we're we're, we're moving to a cloud-first world where everybody's on a laptop and most people are not connected to a domain anymore. So right. we wanted to come up with this technology that would allow you to change the local passwords in all of your machines without being connected to a corporate network and have it happen on a regular basis, mm -hmm. but not create an agent and not require all this connectivity. Mm -hmm. So we came up with this idea of, you know what, the, like the Google Authenticator or RSA tokens, yeah. where they uh, change their numbers on a regular basis because mm -hmm. they've got a seed inside of them. Mm -hmm. So we came up with the seed distribution technology and an application that you can install in your workstations, in your servers, Macs, PCs, and uh, and all. And what it does is it gets a seed, and then it just begins changing passwords. 
we can copy that C to a central console, mm -hmm. and then since we know the time of day, just like a token does, mm -hmm. we can figure out what the password is for each one of the machines, and each machine gets a different seed. So we've come up with a way of managing mm -hmm. passwords and keeping them rotated on connected and disconnected machines, or what are called online and offline management. Mm -hmm. And so we've seen this as one of the biggest problems to solve, and we've figured out a way of doing this using web services or just never being connected at all. So mm -hmm. for the connected people, we can do privileged identity management, and now we can do things for the disconnected. Mm -hmm. The third piece we announced was we have all of these APIs for silicon to silicon communication, mm -hmm. for cyber defense and cyber warfare. And so these are APIs that you can use for orchestration. So that let's say you get an indication of compromise. Somebody uh, says, hey, we sound, found Mimikatz running in this mm -hmm. area of the network stealing credentials. Very common. Yeah, you can call our API to change all the passwords everywhere in the environment. And because mm -hmm. we're doing this at like thousands of machines per minute, mm -hmm. that usually knocks out that uh, consequence pretty quickly. Right, right. So well, that's awesome. So what we wanted to do is get this whole life cycle from like the daily health check yeah. through privileged identity and access management, and then finally go into the API world of orchestration. And we've been working with like Phantom, yeah. and with like FSO out of FireEye, mm -hmm. but then also working with the SIM vendors, tying their stuff into ours too. That's fantastic. That addresses a lot of problems we talk about on the show, so thanks for sharing that with our audience. Sure, thanks and so much, we're always Phil. trying to make it better. I mean, it's kind mm. of cool because, you know, the threats get better, mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, we're trying to make things better for IT people. Fantastic. Thank you so much. You bet. Take care.